When creating your workflow, more often than not, you're going to have to assign a task to an individual or a group of individuals. In Nintex Workflow for SharePoint, that's easily done with the Assign Flexi Task action. Let's drag one of those actions on the Workflow Canvas and take a look at how that's configured. Go over to the core section of your workflow actions and usually under commonly used, you'll see assign flexi task. If it's not there, feel free to search for it in the search workflow actions toolbar up top. Drag and drop onto the designer canvas and you'll notice that by default, there are two different logic branches on here. One for approve and one for reject. If you double click on the action, you'll be able to open up the configuration screen. Now there's a lot going on on the screen, but it's very easy to configure. Here, up top, under Assignees, you'll be able to use the People Picker to add individuals to assign the task to, or you can use SharePoint groups or AD groups to assign the task. If you don't know to enter those particular groups, simply click on the Browse Reference Guide here, and you can actually make your selections through external email address, lookup, or all the other choosing categories up top. After you've made your selections, you'll be fine to progress in the action. You can then allow delegation if you wish to allow delegation of these tasks to the set delegators of the actions. If you want to allow lazy approval, check to enable lazy approval. We can talk about lazy approval a little bit later, but it's a more simplified way of approving tasks. If you want to add a description to your task, simply enter in the task description here and you'll be able to allow others to see that task description in the workflow designer canvas. If you want to have additional outcomes besides approve or reject, under outcomes, click on add outcome. Here, you'll be able to provide a name, a description, and then choose if comments are optional, required, or don't even worry about supplying comments if that outcome has been selected. If you want to choose the behavior of the action, simply choose behavior for either first response applies. This means that if you send out this task to multiple recipients, say SharePoint group, whoever replies first with whatever outcome, be it approve, reject, or a different type of outcome, it will take that response and then move forward in that direction. You can have majority must choose a specific outcome, which means that the majority that were assigned the task must choose a specific outcome for it to progress one way or the other. All must agree on a specific outcome, majority decides, and then all must agree. These different outcomes will usually take place depending on the workflow logic or the business logic applied to your workflow, uh, but most often than not, we see people use the first response applies. If you want to store the outcome in a variable, simply click on store outcome variable, and if you have a text type variable to store that outcome in, you can assign that there. If you want to store the outcome achieved in, you can do that well by once again storing it in another text variable. Now, the task content type that you use marked in the not will be the Nintex Workflow Multi-Outcome Task. That's by default set to the assigned flexi task. And you can also change the task name if you want. Usually this is left default. If you want, you can assign a priority to this task. So when recipients of the task or assignees of the task get their notification, they can see what priority level it is, and you can actually assign a due date. Now you have the option to use a different form type aside from the out of the box SharePoint task form. And to do that, you can actually use Nintex forms to create that task form out. Uh, and there you'd be able to see a Nintex forms task editor up top where you can actually edit that task form. If you want to store the task IDs, maybe you want to reference the task IDs that were used within the workflow, feel free to save that in another string variable, and that could be referenced later. Maybe you want to query that task list at a later point to see which tasks within that workflow task list referenced this workflow. From there, we've got other options for configuring the task notification. In the task notification, you go ahead and customize the email that the assignees receive when they are assigned a task. And you can also customize the attachments if you want to have default attachments sent uh, within the task notification. Now, if you have it that the first response applies and all other individuals no longer need to reply to a task, what you can do is do the not required notification. And so for everyone else that doesn't have to respond to the task, they will get a not required notification and you can customize the look of that email. 
If you need to build in reminders, simply click on reminders on the toolbar and you can set the frequency and number of reminders that you want to send to individuals to complete the task that they have been assigned. You have the ability to use time calculation for business days only and business hours only so you don't hit users outside their normal business working hours. You can then set the importance of the reminder emails, apply a custom subject to it, and also build out the custom email body for the reminders. If you want to build an escalation, simply click on escalation up top, and you can choose to either delegate the task or complete the task, and then you set the time in which that action takes place by setting the days, hours, minutes, uh, the time calculation, the desired outcome from that, and then any comments you wish to track too. And then from there, you're able to go and save this workflow. Once everything has been completed, especially the assignees, which is the one required value to be entered in the assigned Flexi task, you're free to go ahead and click on save and you'll have your configured action to use going forward.